Hello, David here at merchantaccounts.ca with another episode of the Vlogcast. So much work goes into writing copy, marketing, advertising, your sales funnel, and basically the process of winning new customers. Having a system where you can track these events at different stages along the way is very important, especially as a business grows and new team members are added. And if a CRM is a central hub of your business, it's not everything in the kitchen sink. The days of independent systems are increasingly behind us and systems have to speak and integrate together. Today I'm talking to Michael Fitzgerald of One Page CRM. Mike's going to tell us about how CRM is more than a simple sales tool, how it can interact with many parts of your business, and he's going to demystify us a little bit of the process of picking a CRM software. So Mike, thanks for joining today. Very pleased to meet you, uh, David, and, and thanks for considering me for this podcast. So I'm going to start with what is CRM software? I'm pretty sure it stands for Customer Relationship Management. Uh, is that about like, tell, tell me about what that means. So Customer Relation Management, it's, uh, it's a broad term. It uh, encapsulates any touch point that you have with your customer and um, how you can take care of your customer as best from, uh, from start to finish, from when they are lead right through to when you do business with them and maybe even account management or ongoing support. So it's quite broad. So I should start at this point by making a fair disclosure to any viewers. We're a customer of One Page CRM. I'm the one that chose it. I wouldn't say I'm biased because I could have chosen any platform, but I really liked it. And there was some functionality that we'll talk about later, the next actions and some sales stuff. But Mike, I know that not all CRM software is built the same. You guys, I think, have a specialization in sales and some other platforms might, maybe they're like really good at financial integrations. I have no idea, but can you talk about, because people watching this are probably curious about picking a CRM software. What are kind of some of the things that CRM softwares might be particularly good at compared to another platform? Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a broad range. Uh, when you go searching for CRM, it can be a little bit daunting. Uh, we specialize mostly in the sales aspect of CRM. Um, and we are actually probably, you know, closer to service-based SMEs. Uh, so we're not super specialized, but that's what we're probably more suited for. But CRM is much broader than that. A CRM can actually take care of like a lot of the touch points um, and it can even have financial functions. It can have support functions and stuff like that. But like I said, we focus, we zoom in 100% on the sales. Um, and because yeah. of... Yeah. Uh, I wanted to I wanted to ask a question about that Mike, because I noticed that so one page CRM it's very much is a sales tool but basically every in time you're interacting with a, a, a record or something you probably explain it better than me it's your product but there's a next action thing it's like hey when's the next time I should contact this person and when I looked at it that seems to me like something you'd build if you noticed a problem or there was a lack of solutions. So I'm curious to know, how did one page CRM come about? Because it's a really unique CRM platform. Yeah, great question, David. Um, it's a different David that uh, semi-inspired one page CRM. So I was a, a GTD fan uh, from David Allen, getting things done. Um, and I guess, uh, you know, if you apply that to your personal life and your business, your interactions with what you do have to be very efficient. You never stand up from a meeting about knowing exactly what's to be done next. And there's this system in uh, a part of the philosophy of getting things done is the next action. What is the next action? So you always focus on the next action. And I decided to build that into our software. And in fact, it became, when we built it into our software, it became part of a sales process, but a really simple sales process. If you, if you kind of you know, labor a salesperson with a very heavy sales process that's admin heavy. It just won't be followed. It just won't be done. So we wanted to build in what is the most efficient way for a salesperson to get in, do the work in the CRM and get back on the, you know, customer facing tasks, which are the interaction and the emails and everything like that, everything you have to do to actually close a sale. So our right. premise, or our, I guess our product mission from the very start was to be as easy to use email and to be approach zero admin. So that is part of it. And so this next action system meant, and it's the reason I guess why we're called one page, is that you just focus on that single page that's called the action stream and that one next action um, that's associated with every contact that you're selling to. 
That makes that makes sense because otherwise, so there's so many tools. I'm going to give an analogy, a silly analogy. Some of my viewers might know this, but I, I love electric unicycles. They're like little one wheel unicycles that, by the way, nowadays are so crazy. They'll go like 80 kilometers an hour. You'd have to be crazy to go on a unicycle at 80 kilometers an hour. But my safety gear is getting worn out. OK, my elbow pads are a little ratty and my knee pads, I don't know if it's going to protect me anymore. And I was Googling what's the best safety gear, especially knowing that this the, this these machines are getting faster and more powerful. And I saw a post on on a, on a forum and it said the best safety gear is the safety gear that you're actually going to wear. And I think there's a really strong tie into a CRM. You could have uh, like a CRM platform that can do everything and the kitchen sink. But if your staff don't use it, then they're not going to see any benefit from it. And so I think what you're saying is you tried to build a tool that people would want to use because it's going to make their job easier in some way. Exactly. Um, so it, it, it's a very good analogy. And you get somebody who's implementing a large CRM system, maybe for a big team, and it could be very uh, complex uh, and build on that developer who's configuring a CRM believe that they're doing the best job possible. And yes, it is the best job possible. But if, you, if like you said, your, your salespeople don't use it. And the reason is they're slightly different characters. You have to actually understand the character of the salesperson. I'm not saying they're lazy. They just need to be very efficient. They're doing lots of stuff. They're interacting with lots of customers and they're kind of like being dragged left and right. So when they dip and dive into their CRM system, it has to be ultra efficient. It has to be ultra focused. Otherwise, they feel they're in the process of doing administration. And that is one of the petty hates of a salesperson. They hate doing admin. So it can't feel right. like an admin. Our system, what we built from the start is that what is the least that you could do to actually get away with just doing that to sell to the customer. And so we thought, let's focus on the one next action that's required to close a sale. If you don't mind me giving you a quick analogy that I use, I guess, for CRM or sales versus project management. With project management, if I was to build this table that I'm, I'm, I'm here standing beside, there's probably 20, 10, 15 tasks or whatever you have to buy and stuff, and that can all be done in sequence and planned. With sales, it's a little bit more unpredictable. Yes, you can have your, you know, your templates and your scripts that you follow and everything like that, but there's objections and there's different directions that it can take. So the biggest focus that you need to do is focus on that one next action. So if I'm coming off the call from you, David, and we're after talking about a solution that I'm trying to sell to you, what is that one next action when I've done that? And it might be do a follow-up call next week, or it might be, you know, you want to refine an estimate or something like that. That is the focus and when it should be done. And that's the, that is the premise of one page CRM. What is the minimum that needs to be done? And of course, yes, you can call, you can record lots of other stuff in a CRM, but you need to stay on track with the sale. And that's what we are here to kind of, you know, uh, suit the character of the salesperson who's not into admin, but into actually speaking to customers um, and doing up everything that's needed to be done to close the sale, not be, you know, uh, you know, weigh, weighed down by a lot of admin work, uh, which to them, they don't see it as being something that's that important. Oh, exactly, because they just want to. It's it, it's like it's tied. It's housekeeping details. So uh, that that makes uh, that makes that makes complete sense, and it is why I chose one page CRM. Uh, and this isn't an advertisement for one page. I have you here because you're an expert on the topic. But for any viewers, if you're interested in picking a CRM, I mean, if sales are important to your business, hint hint, then that's a good one to to consider. But I'm going to ask uh, another question because picking a CRM software can be can be overwhelming, and sales is obviously I think super important, maybe the most important thing. What are some of the other functions, or what are the, what are some of the other things people should keep in mind when they're you know researching the options and picking a CRM for platform for their business? So some of the important parts are I guess uh, getting a system that you know is not too big for what you want to do. So you know there's there's a really a large range of CRMs that are on the market and sometimes you might hear a brand name and it's, it's kind of popular in the media and you say, oh, maybe that should be the one I work. But it's really not suited to maybe small business or it's not suited to, you know, ones that connect to e-commerce or ones that, you know, uh, try to do everything so they can be too large. But some of the, you know, the really important functions like what, what are you going to be doing um, 
as a salesperson? Are you going to be on the phone a lot, ringing, and you, do you need to actually, you know, uh, record, uh, you know, calls or different things like that? Are you going to be doing lead qualification, lead generation? Um, are you going? Are the deals are very long? Uh, so, you know, do you need to be collaborative? So some CRMs are really efficient, but they're not really good at having multiple people on either side of the sale. So it, it, is, it can be a little bit daunting. Um, I think by reading reviews and, and looking at the website and seeing, do you, do you see that your industry is represented in there when people talk about the solutions that it can be used for? That can be a good starting point. So at least then you know that this CRM is more for, you know, suited, suits our industry a little bit better or the way they do things. Um, you know, look at the product videos and demos and stuff like that, and you'll get a feel for are they speaking your language? Like, you know, some I know it's only a small little thing, but if somebody s- describes your, uh, you know, your contact as a customer versus a client, you know, so clients are usually used in kind of service business, uh, you know, so the language will will give a lot of hints as well. But it's it's not an easy right. task, David. There's a lot of competition out there. There's a lot of CRM. There's some for verticals. There's some for big companies and enterprises. And then there's a lot for uh, SM, SMBs as well. Well, that, you know, and I remember that. So it's been years since we picked one page CRM. But I remember one of the things that was really important to me is like, you don't want a glass ceiling over your head. And one of the, f- I know what one page CRM can do because I'm a client of it. I don't know if others, I assume many can, but like, Here's my point. For example, the importance of integrating your e-commerce orders into a CRM is really important. So people know if orders have come in, if they've shipped, if a customer calls, they have a complaint. And I know that in one page CRM, you have webhooks and other APIs. So, you know, I think, is, is that a typical feature that a CRM software would have? Because I know that appealed to me about one page. And basically you can make it integrate into anything as long as the CRM has like that interface to let you go shoot data into and out of it, right? Yeah, I like in general, I guess the web is, you know, it's gone a la carte. Uh, so you can pick the different tools that make sense for you and best suited for your business. And to allow, to for it to be work well as, you know, I want one page, say for example, one page CRM for my sales, and I want to use something else for, um, for my e-commerce. It's really important that both companies or all companies that are in the cloud keep their, you know, their APIs open, you know, not restricted too much, use webhooks, and now you can get data to pass seamlessly between. You can get alerts, you can, you can do whatever you need to do. Uh, and there's great tools out there as well, even like Zapier or something like that, where you can actually program. If something happens in one page CRM, you can, you can trigger to do something else in another application. But it's hugely important. And, and your CRM, again, people are, you know, have to remember that it is probably one of the most important central databases in your system, in your, in your business, sorry. Um, and so, like we left customers, they call it, like, you know, the, our CRM is, or one page CRM is the center of truth. Um, or they might say a comment, like, if it doesn't exist in one page CRM, it, if it's not in one page CRM, it doesn't exist. And these are, like, you know, you, you can't have these multiple systems where, you know, the information is not in sync. You need this one place that you go to, and that's usually your CRM. So it's really important that it's able to communicate with the other things like e-commerce, like you said, if there's a shipment or something like that. These are, these are key. Um, and if you don't, you're just going to be uh, jumping between systems, trying to join the dots that you shouldn't have to do in, in modern uh, software technology. Uh, absolutely. And it's funny, one of my questions, which I think you already answered is, is there a right way or wrong way to use a CRM? Well, the wrong way is to not use it. So I think you, you made a point and it's like research is an integral part of picking it. I would say I'm bouncing around between my points, but they're all connected here. Okay. So a CRM is the central hub of a business, I believe, because it's the, it's the repository of your customer data. And all the touch points from there are, are really important. So I think one of the things that would be important if you're looking at picking a CRM platform, first of all, is demoing it uh, and finding out what it can do. But it's really about understanding your own problems. So you must have businesses reach out to you about whether one page CRM is a good fit or not. Like if a business is young because you are targeting small and mid-sized businesses, how can they I'm gonna qualify a question one bit further. If I gave a startup a million dollars for a website, 
build your website. I figure about 950,000 of it's gonna be wasted. Because if you don't know what your problems are, then how, how can you solve them? It's sometimes you need to experience the pain before you can desire the solution. So if a business is young or you know growing and it wants to reach or, or pick a, a CRM platform that's really good for their business, what are some of the things that they should be thinking about? Like what, what, what are some of the things that they should be considering? Again, I, I guess it's, it's associated with what business uh, they're doing. And if it's a service business, if there's different, if like, you know, what are the communication with the customers? What type of communication will they be doing? If it's completely online, uh, you know, and it's, it's more of a backend system, or is it like a more of a proactive where you're actually doing a lot of dialing and emailing and, you know, qualifying and stuff like that. I guess the demo is probably one of the best ways of doing it, you know. So some CRM don't offer a free trial. They'll offer a demo. Uh, we ourselves, we offer a free trial. Trial. You can sign up in seconds. We, it comes with dummy data. Uh, and one thing we do is we're trying to help our users picture themselves or picture a typical company in our software. So if you sign up to uh, our CRM, what actually happens is you select an industry and we populate and we customize based on industry. So if you say something like real estate in our system, we will use the language in our system to say uh, that's more compatible with real estate. And we put dummy data into uh, our CRM showing you uh, maybe a typical customer that would have been uh, maybe buying some real estate. So this is one way that helps a lot. Now, maybe other uh, CRM companies, they might actually have a demo specific or a webinar that's very specific to an industry as well. So we try to do it on the onboarding and give you the dummy data of here's a typical uh, customer in your industry. And we find this helps a lot. We try to do it for as many industries as we can. That's actually, you know, that we find that use one page CRM, uh, you know, give them, give them that view of they can view their business in the software, and this is a big help. You know, we also do webinars, we'll jump on screen shares, and we try to support people as best we can. You know, one, one quick look at their, their website, see what the business is, and we can actually guide them. Um, but for them, when they start looking, I would say, you know, the demo is very good, reach out to some account managers, in general to, uh, to, to, the, to the software people, um, and, uh, Maybe maybe try and uh, reach out. If you do know anybody that's using a CRM in your industry, you'll probably figure out fairly fast what is the best things that they need to be looking for or maybe what's good examples. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that's great advice. You know, Mike, I want to talk for a second about entrepreneurship. I find it so fascinating that when I have people on the podcast, right, so often they say things. And the second the words come out of their mouth, it's like, that's obvious. But... If I had a hundred years to think about it, I wouldn't have done it on my own. And so when you just made the point about, uh, you know, you pre-populate the data for certain industries, I mean, I obviously that's something that you came to, or I think probably over time. I, I'm just curious, I just wanna to talk to you right now as a business owner, like, like what took you to start One Page CRM? How did you end up? Because it's always an interesting story to hear how people ended up where they are today. Yeah, so I, I guess I, I... Uh, I had a service business um, and I started thinking, how can I grow this service business? So we were a small business. Um, we were web development, um, e-commerce systems. We used good old Magento, if you remember that product. Or if, oh, you know, yeah. if you know that product, yeah. So we used to customize and install Magento for people. Um, and I literally went Googling how to grow business. And uh, so I, I uh, came across these sales gurus that were saying you should focus on sales actions. And I actually had to, because I'm an engineer and we like building stuff, I had to turn around and start Googling uh, what is a sales action. And then it turned out to be all these very simple and small things salespeople have to do. So it's either a phone call, sending a brochure, following up after a call, um, sending an email, doing up an estimate, you know, solving some technical uh, questions that maybe a purchaser might have and so on so I said okay this is a, if you increase sales actions you increase sales this sounds fairly simple so with that I said okay let's let's go get a CRM for myself and um, that actually will help me with these you know so-called sales actions and when I uh, I think I tried three or four CRM systems 
and I went looking for where do I put my sales action. So every time I went into these demos of other CRM systems, I found that I was being hit with dashboards of charts and graphs. And you know, that's great. You know, you can look at your sales results on charts and graphs, but how do you get to those results? Like how do you get, how do you, how does your, this system that I want to sign up to and pay for actually help me, you know, do the sales, oh, push me to do right, the sales, because, poke me. Exactly. Because because the results Sorry? what matters, not the pie graph at the end. It's like how do I want a tool that helps me, that helps me get yeah. to a pie graph that looks good. That's it exactly. And so we were a little bit frustrated that we were being hit with this. Uh, and of course, yes, see other CRM systems they have tasks, but they're a little bit disjointed. I mean, like you can have general tasks and you got to connect them to the to the contacts or the companies that you're selling to. Um, and it's a little bit, you know, not as uh, emphasized, I would say. And so if you are a very busy, small company, usually you're juggling lots of balls and you get into your CRM system to do your sales, you're actually, you know, you're not getting that focused view. You're being pushed towards results, which is great for sales managers and lots of other people doing the sales. But I was a business owner and I was one of the main salespeople in the business. So it gave me that empathy of what the salespeople have to go through. And some of these charts and graphs are so comprehensive that maybe sales managers want to see is that the salesperson ends up having to jump through lots of hoops, put in lots of information to get those charts nice and, and fancy. So we said, okay, this is, we want a system that will push me, give me like a shot of coffee in the morning to get me going in sales. And there's nothing better than seeing a list of your sales actions for today. Just do these sales actions. There might be 10, 20, whatever it is, or maybe just two. And the two you have for today is like, you know, make a phone call and send an estimate. And once you punch out, you know, those two, that's it. You can back out of the system. And off you go to maybe, you know, you might have a meeting or you might be hiring some, somebody or you might be, you know, trying to work out a delicate project or whatever it is you want to do. So we built something for efficiency for a, a business owner. And then we realized um, this is the same efficiency that salespeople want because the business owner is busy and the salesperson is also kind of juggling lots of uh, customers and clients and stuff like that. They as well don't want a lot of administration. So they're coming from two different characters. The business owner has actually has to do the sales of a very small business and the salesperson in a larger company you know, they end up having the exact same need. And the need is not, you know, looking at fancy charts and graphs. It's actually how does, it, how, do, how does this system help me increase sales? How does it make me uh, get the chaos of sales under control? And that's what we aim for. It's, it's so interesting. You know what I love, Mike? It's the passion. Because I, I know this is not startup. I know a one-page CRM has been operating a long time, but you haven't lost your core message. Like It exists for a reason. Out of curiosity, how long have you been uh, operating one-page CRM? So I guess there was a little bit of an overlap for a while while we did the client service business. Uh, so it started as an idea in 2000 and, uh, 2010. But we really only took it serious in 2000, um, probably late 2011. And so we dropped the client work and we said, okay, we've got something here. We have get, we're getting too many really, you know, uh, positive feedback and requests. And we had some sales, so we said we'd have to give it a go. Um, and I don't know whether you're interested in uh, how we actually started the product, but it was quite interesting. But um, one of my jobs as CEO and still is one of my jobs is buying ice cream for people in the office. Um, so I like surprising <laughs> people with this. And uh, so one day, so I'm, I'm known for this, and uh, I went out and got some ice cream and gave it to my small team at the time, and I said, okay, we're, we're starting a new product. And this was... Wow. Uh, this was late in Dece mid-December, maybe. And I said, we're going to ship it by the 22nd of March. And I'm going to take my first design from the designer, and we're just going to ship. Because I was influenced by two people when I was building this product. And one was Seth Godin. I don't know whether you know of Seth Godin. And he had this uh, message one day that I got in an email and it said, build in shipping as a feature. And I, I kind of almost archived it out of my inbox. And then I thought about it. I said, this is, this, is very, this is very good because this is the days before MVP was known and before the Lean Startup book was written. 
And I said, imagine if you're building something and one of the most important features is the date that you ship it, that other features will actually take a back seat. So it means you have to ultra focus on what's your USP. What is the, and you know, that MVP, what is the thing? By actually picking a very aggressive date, you can only build the, the, you know, the main part of your MVP. And so that was a big influence. And we did ship on that day, on the 22nd of March. And the other thing was from, um, from Reid Hoffman. And it was just something that was in the back of my head because, you know, we can be a little bit perfectionist for, for our customers. Um, but when you're building a product, you don't actually know exactly what way the market is going to take it. Um, but Reid Hoffman, the founder of LinkedIn, said that um, if you're not half embarrassed by your product the day it goes live, you've left it too late. So with those two things <laughs> in my mind, yeah, with those two things in my mind, I said, okay, let's three months, let's just build something, this idea that I have, this napkin sketch of just a simple dashboard with your uh, contacts or the leads or prospects, the people you're selling in, and what is that one next action beside it? And so it floats to the top like your Twitter stream, um, and it's just 140 characters that you're allowed to put in for you know, that one next action, so it keeps it ultra-focused. You don't get you know, very bloated messages in your dashboard. What is that key yeah. uh, you know, action that needs to be done? And so one page was born, and we've, we've developed it in the customer's hands ever since. Uh, that the day that it went live on, on the 22nd of March. And, and just one final point on that, David, if you don't mind me saying. Of course. You know, as designers yeah. and as people who build product, we can fuss over the color of a button or something like that. But on that day that we put it into customers' hands, you know, and we had people signing up for accounts, the color of the button just goes out the window. You have to solve now real problems, real problems with users, and you get to know that. And I know it's called customer development now, and... And, you know, there's terms for it, but back then in, in 2011, just there wasn't that much about this, uh, you know, kind of stuff in the market, about MVPs and all that kind of stuff. But it really forces you. When you put your, or as some people would say, expose your art, and you take your critics and you take, but then there is this cohort of people that love what you do and gives you that energy to drive you on, but they also help you hone your product and make it really suitable for the marketplace because your worldview is different to everybody else's worldview. But you have to, at some stage, expose your art and then let the market decide um, you know, what's the good and bad bits and you have to tweak and make sure that uh, you get it right. So it's that product market fit that people, people will talk about now. Where the people can go to get in touch with you if they want to learn more about OnePage? Yeah, so our, our, web, our website is uh, onepagecrm.com. Um, so it's easy to get to. We're actually, uh, we pride ourselves on uh, what we call in turn, inside the company is uh, white glove uh, support. So uh, we, even though we're a low cost product, uh, we still want to give um, exceptional customer service. So if, if you have any trouble at all, any questions or anything like that, just go on to onepagecrm.com and reach out either to our chat or uh, send us an email. And we're more than happy to jump on a screen share or something like that and maybe try and solve whatever problems you have um, of getting your business to be represented inside our CRM. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Mike, for joining today and for all the information that you shared. No problem. You're very welcome, David.